Hey friends, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about something called the second meal effect. And you might be thinking, why in the hell do I wanna know about this? Well, if you've ever experienced symptoms of hypoglycemia, that is after you eat, you're kind of jittery. Your brain feels like you feel kind of like you're floating in your body and it's an uncomfortable feeling and you know that you need blood glucose. You might wanna keep watching because this is something that unfortunately not too many people talk about on the internet. I haven't seen anyone really that I know of talk about this, but. I became interested in learning more about this when I became a little bit more interested in the ketogenic diet back in 2015. And I realized that, man, sometimes when I have just a small amount of carbohydrates, like if I'm carving up for a workout, for example, not that I do it all the time, but on leg day, back day, and so forth, I do have a little bit more carbs, I would feel disproportionately like hypoglycemic and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And that's due to this notion of the second meal effect. And the definition is, is something like this. Well, I'm gonna summarize so that you can understand this. Uh, we have meal one, meal number one, and then we have meal number two, okay? Okay, the body is trying in real time to adapt to everything in our environment. You put a load when you're trying to exercise, your, body, your muscles are adapting. Um, you know, if you're meditating, your, your body's adapting, right? It's trying to help you mitigate stress. So the body, is adapting from meal one to meal two. And so the macronutrient composition of meal one affects the macronutrient metabolism and post-meal processing of meal two. That's the second meal effect. Let me say that again. The macronutrient composition of meal one influences the metabolism and the post-meal processing of meal two. Here's a real life example. Let's say meal one is low carb, high fat. Let's say meal two is high carb, low fat. It's the inverse, right? So what needs to happen in order to break down a low carb, high fat meal? You need things like bile, okay? You don't need much insulin, okay? You need pancreatic lipase. So from the gastrointestinal tract level to the post-meal processing level, there's, there's a lot of differences in how this meal is metabolized. So the body's taking note of this, whether it's through the brain, the vagal nerve, we don't really know all the exact details about how this happens, but because the body assumes that, well, when you're eating these foods, then meal two is gonna be st structurally similar, but check this out, meal two, what's gonna happen, right? As opposed to having low insulin here, you'll have high insulin on this side, okay? You're not gonna need much bile because it's low fat, and you're gonna need more enzymes and proteases, things like that to maybe break down some of the, some of the protein and, and, and amylases and the carbohydrates. So long story short, I'm making this oversimplified so that you kind of understand. Enzymatically, mechanistically, th these are gonna be different in the post-meal processing. Therefore, you might get a little bit extra jittery and have low blood sugar and have more symptoms. So you need to understand this when you're going from, you know, having low carb to high carb, for example. And so there needs to be a little bit of, I don't, for some reason the word parity is coming to mind, but I know that's not the right word. I would say consistency in macronutrients from meal to meal. Otherwise, you're going, you might run into issues. And we do see this in individuals, you know, when they wanna have like a high carb day or a cheat day, whatever, uh, unnecessarily jittery, can get post-meal hypoglycemia, symptoms along those lines. So this doesn't mean that you can never have carbohydrates on the day that you have low carb. It just means that you need to understand consecutive meals. If the macronutrients are much different, you may experience different symptoms. You may be extra prone to experiencing hypoglycemia or an insulin surge or a glucose surge if the meal to meal macronutrients are different. And I'm sure intuitively, if you think back like, gosh, at one time I felt hypoglycemic, what was that? Uh, what was the deal there? You know, you need to kind of think about that. And the other thing about that is when you start fasting for pro from prolonged periods of times, if you think about, gosh, well, I'm feeling jittery when I'm fasting. I'm feeling like my, I'm, you know, cloudy thinking, symptoms of hypo hypoglycemia. Could it have been because your prior meal was, met, was from a composition standpoint different than the meal that you had even before that, right? So we need to understand that in order to minimize some of our symptoms, uh, after the meal and to, in order to have greater success when we fast, we need to have some sort of consistency in our macronutrients. And that's why generally I do recommend, unless you're an athlete or have unique considerations, generally lower carb and higher fat, higher protein can be helpful for a lot of people. And just when you're having the higher carbs, make sure that 
when you're eating those, it's, it's around exercise, okay? And so you're eating for the work that you do. So you're having carbohydrates to replenish broken down glycogen and glucose during a workout. So does that kind of makes sense. Uh, we're gonna do a lot more videos on this. I just wanted to kind of plant the seeds so that you understand, because I did have a, a direct message on the second meal effect. I think it's an interesting concept, and it helps to explain that if you get jittery after a meal, you can kind of think back why that is. Because I've, I've hap this has happened to me, and I'm like, why am I so jittery when I just had like a little bit of a sweet potato? And it's because I basically the meal before that was a lot of egg yolks and avocados, those are like zero carbohydrates. So my body thought that's what I was going to eat again, but I didn't. So hopefully that helps. I don't want to overcomplicate nutrition. I don't want to make this too complicated for anyone. Um, but it makes sense that in nature, you probably wouldn't get this, right? Because if, if carbohydrates are in season, you probably would have carbohydrates for breakfast and protein for breakfast and carbohydrates for lunch or dinner, right? And so it makes sense that we probably wouldn't go from zero carb to high carb in the same day uh, if we're eating what nature offered to us in our local environment. So it kind of makes sense that the body's kind of adapting. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. That helps us, that helps you, because when we launch new videos, we wanna make sure that you see them, because we only put out good content. So I hope you enjoy this video. Any questions, feedback, comments? If you ever get hypoglycemia, I would love to know why, how, the details. I like to respond to your comments and get you know, feedback, and I, I learn from you, just like hopefully you learn from these videos. So we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Peace.